Welcome to the tutorial creating a mixed rig part 2. In this tutorial I'm just going to continue from where we left off in the previous tutorial creating a mixed rig. So the first thing I'd like to talk about are these pink X's. I just want to reiterate why I'm creating them. So generally when you animate, you animate in the camera view using the transform tool. Um, usually if you want to pick a part of the body to move you grab it and then you perform a transformation on either rotation or translation or whatever. The problem is is that if you see here in the network view what I've actually grabbed is the drawing element and that's not bad um, even if I make a transformation on it it'll automatically get recorded on its peg element which is what we want. However a lot of the time we want to grab an entire group so the arm, the forearm and the hand. Um, this is why we group them with a peg but what we actually did is that we used a drawing module in place of a peg for several of the advantages I told you about in the previous tutorial. The other great part about this is that if you want to select this entire arm in the camera view and not just through the timeline or through the network view by doing something like this, so now I've selected the entire arm, what we can actually do is actually draw something on this drawing module and that's not something you can do with the peg module. So then when we actually want to select this entire arm in the camera view, we need only to select that drawing object which in this case is a pink cross. So between the two tutorials I've actually moved some of the crosses and added crosses. You might notice that I got rid of the crosses that were on the pupils um, and that's because it's going to be difficult to grab some of these objects separately if those crosses are there. So instead I just decided to put a cross in the center to represent all of the facial features. So let's go over all the crosses that exist on the rabbit. So the central one, as I mentioned, are the facial features. This one right here is actually for the entire head, which means it'll take care of the head, the facial features, and the ears. And if we look here, we see indeed it goes to the uh, karate rabbit head peg. Um, and then if we want to select the cross just beneath it, So that X was drawn on the neck peg, which controls everything below it, which includes the head, the facial features, and the ears. And then if we want to grab this one right here, that's at the navel of the karate rabbit, we realize that it selects the upper body peg, so that controls everything from the waist up. So that's the arms, the forearms, the hands, uh, the tail, the neck the head, the facial features, and the ears. Then if we want to select the one below it, that's actually on the pelvic region or the hips, um, we're selecting the lower body. So that controls the hips and the legs and all the components of the legs being the tibia and the feet. You can see that going down. And then I think the other ones I actually went over with you, so each of these crosses controls an entire leg, each of the lower crosses control an entire lower leg, being the foot and the tibia, uh, same with the X's at the elbow joint, it's the lower arm being the forearm and the hand, and the ones at the shoulder, of course, uh, control the entire arm. So one thing we didn't do in the previous tutorial is extend the exposure of these X's in the timeline. So I'm going to do that now. Um, I know that for this view, um, the X should go up to the 8th frame. So I'm just going to do two things. I'm going to just pull this so that we can see the names. Um, and also I'm going to zoom in on the timeline so that it's bigger. Um, so you can right click on the 8th frame and say extend exposure or use the keyboard shortcut F5. Um, ironically enough, the software that displays the keyboard shortcuts that you see on the screen um, is controlled by the keyboard shortcut F5, so I can't do it using F5, uh, so I'm going to do them all manually, but it really is quite fast if you just use F5. And actually what I should do is you can select several at the same time. 
uh, and you can also extend the exposure like that which is faster than doing one layer at a time. So I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Um, it's good that I actually labeled these drawing um, module slash pegs in capital letters. It made it quite easy to find in the timeline. Um, the next thing that we need to do, which we didn't do, is to actually set the pivot for the two other views because right now they're just set for the front view. And actually, I don't think I set all of the pivots with you. I showed you how to copy them from the drawing element layers, these blue layers, and then use a paste special to paste them onto these higher uh, peg slash drawing module layers. Uh, but I didn't do them for all of them. So I might just quickly select them all so you can see you know, with the transform tool where they are. Uh, these ones weren't extended enough. There we go. So if you look at the upper body peg, it's the pivot is exactly in the navel, um, and that is the pivot from the body that I copied it from. The neck pivot obviously comes from where the pivot was placed for the neck. The head pivot is on the chin, and it's taken from the head. The facial features had no specific pivot that I was copying and pasting from. It, I actually put, tried to put equidistant from the eyebrows and the bottom of the mouth, so it includes the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So the torso is also from the body. So the pivot for the torso and the upper body were copied from the body element. The lower body peg uh, took its pivot from the hips, so they're, it's identical to the pivot for the hips. Uh, we did the legs together, so we know it's for the upper part of the legs. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So now we have to set the pivot for the three-quarter profile view. Once again, I'm also going to speed up this part of the video, but now that you know where I'm taking the pivots from, you should be able to follow along pretty easily.
that's pretty much it for setting the pivots for the three-quarter view. Um, you may have noticed that I did a few things. Uh, don't forget you have to create an empty drawing before you are able to copy and paste a pivot um, onto one of these drawing layers uh, slash peg modules. Um, also, make sure everything's uncollapsed before you add an empty drawing or else you might make a drawing object disappear. There are a few cells that were not extended uh, for the front view that I had to extend as well. And there's a few pivots that I found I didn't put in a good position the first time I set all the pivots, so I used the, the pivot tool here to reposition them on the drawing before I copied and pasted them. And once again, for the facial features, I didn't copy and paste it from a different layer. I really just decided to center it between the facial features. Um, what I should redo is re-enable the body here. The last thing that we didn't set for the front view, actually I set it, but you didn't see me set it, uh, was the pivot for the master peg. So I don't know if you remember but whenever you're setting pivots on one of these green modules, so these peg modules, you can't use this pivot tool here. You have to use one of these three transformation tools from the advanced animation toolbar. Um, and just to let you know as well, whenever you select anything with the transform tool, I don't know if this has confused anybody like that, this pivot is temporary, so it mimics the pivot that you set with the pivot tool. Um, and you're able to see it using the transform tool, but if you move the pivot using the transform tool, you click off it, and then you click on it again, it's just going to go back to the position that you set with the actual pivot tool. So anyway, let's uh, look at where I set the pivot for the master peg for the front view. And if you can see, it's somewhere between the lower legs and the hips. And once again, you have to use one of the tools here, such as the rotate tool. Um, but once I've set my pivot, I don't know if you remember this, but I can't set it for different views. That's the reason that we were using these drawing modules instead of pegs, because then we can divide up these empty drawings that we put into different views. So once it's set, it's going to be in the same place for the three-quarter profile as well as the profile view. And in this case, it's not so bad. Um, sometimes it's quite offset, but this doesn't look too bad. So now what I'm going to do, so let me back up here a bit is I'm going to add the pink X's to the three-quarter view, um, roughly where the pivots are, and then I'm going to extend this exposure for each of these um, drawing slosh peg modules uh, to another eight frames, because if you remember, it goes for another eight frames, and then it switches to the profile view.
So I wasn't going to show you how to do the profile view because after watching me do the entire three-quarter view, I'm sure you get the picture. However, I realized that the profile view is subtly different from the other two views in that the two arms and two legs are usually one on top of the other. So you might be asking yourself, well, I can't put two X's over each other because then when I try to grab one, I might accidentally end up grabbing both. So as a compromise, what I ended up doing was I ended up putting an X beside and slightly up for the body part that's behind. So for example, the O1 arm is behind the O2 arm, so its X is slightly up and to the right. So the last step after you've extended the exposure for the profile view would be to go into the color palette and then search for that color that you used to create your crosses with and then double click on it and then to bring the alpha of that color all the way down to zero so effectively making that color transparent and even though that color is now transparent in the camera view you can still grab that X where it was and it'll still grab that entire arm um, in the camera view. Like that. So that's it for the tutorial creating a mixed rig part two. Stay tuned for the next tutorial creating patches for the elbows and knees.